All right, guys, here we are for our second part of this Von Tunen video. Let's finish up this part of the lesson. And uh, remember, you should be taking notes on this. So again, here is our model, the Von Tunen model. And in the model, we assume two costs are the most important when we're talking about minimizing the cost in order to maximize profit. Again, what are those two costs? Say it with me. Land cost, transportation cost. These are the two most important. That's why it's in that's why it's not smart for a farmer just to say, okay, well, I'm just going to plant, I'm just going to plant blueberries because blueberries have the highest uh, price. Well, they can't, they don't want to do that if a it transport transporting those highly perishable products is going to be so expensive that ultimately those costs are more than what that high price is they're actually selling it for. That doesn't make any sense for them financially because, again, they want to maximize their profit by selling it for the highest price they can, but by minimizing the cost um, in order to maximize that profit. So, again, this model is to explain how do farmers determine how they're going to use their land. What are they going to use their land? Um, what are they going to plant on it? Are they going to do it for, use it for um raising animals or animal grazing what are they going to do to maximize the profit by minimizing the cost and again this structure is in a series of rings at the center of it is the city is the city and in the center of the city you have your market the land is most expensive right next to that market just like in any city um it is this is the most expensive and the further you get away from the city the less expensive the land is however the closest to the city center of the market, that's where the transportation um, is going to be the lowest cost because you're right next to it. You're not traveling as far, so therefore it's not going to cost you so much. But out here on the outskirts, which would be ring four, this is where the transportation is the most expensive. So again, ring one, market gardening and fruit farming, also called trick farming and dairying. Ring two was forest slash timber. Ring three was grain farming. Um, extensive land use. Remember, grain is corn, wheat, um, soybean, millet, sorghum, uh, rice. These are all grains because if you look at the way they're grown, they're all in a stock um, and they're um, and they're seasonal. And finally, out here in four, we have ranching and grazing, so livestock ranching. And as we look at this model, the further you go away from the city center. The land cost decreases, but the transportation costs increase. And as we looked at our example here, we saw the ring three, which is grain farming. Well, when we look at this ring three, ring three three has a lower land cost than ring than um, it is it has a it has a lower land cost than ring two, but a higher cost than ring four. So it's because because again, the further you go from the city the lower the land cost. So again, ring three grain farming, it has a lower cost than two, but a higher cost than four. However, it has a lower transport cost than four, but more than two. Okay, so again, as you get further from the city, those transportation costs increase. So three will have a more expensive transport cost than two, but less expensive than um, four. All right, let's take a look at this again. This is this um, lesson in entirety. Again, it's very important that you have these notes down um, and we will go and review these again. So let's talk about the weaknesses, the criticisms of this model. In his uh, model, he assumed that it was a uniform landscape, meaning that um, landscapes from northern Germany, his large estate would be the same if he went to southern Germany or um, to Italy, to southern Africa, to the United States, and that all the land was going to be the same, that you wouldn't have rivers breaking it up or mountain ranges or deserts, but that it was all consistent. He also assumed that all soil was equally as fertile, which we know is highly, highly untrue. And so he assumed that um, wherever you were in Germany or wherever you were in Europe or wherever you were in the world, 
that the that they would plant the same pattern because the soil quality would be equal well that's not true grains need from rice needs to be grown where there is a large amount of water available because it does need to grow in in water to um, wheat which needs to have some dry elements of the climate he also didn't take into consideration there'd be a change in the demand or price of a commodity like maybe um, corn is such a low cost or, or such a low price that people are willing to pay for it that doesn't make sense to grow it or maybe that's rice or maybe that's sorghum or maybe that's millet so um, or maybe that something like quinoa which became so unbelievably popular over these last years now all of a sudden so many more growers want to grow this quinoa um, because it's so much more in demand also didn't take consideration things like innovation like refrigerated trucks and refrigerated containers which would then extend the milk shed extend the milk shed so where milk um, could be transported over a much greater distance and the same thing with uh, fruits and vegetables i mean today um, much of our fruits and vegetables during the winter come from south america i mean they're transporting those fruits and vegetables from South America or Central America for us to consume out of season. Many of our oranges or strawberries, if they're not in season here, they come from California. Clementines may come from Spain or Northern Africa. So again, this is all due to innovation from refrigerated trucks and containers. Or that there would be a lower transportation cost, which has occurred. Today, transportation costs are so much lower than um, what they were historically. That's because of better road systems uh better um machinery better engines better um better uh, fuel um capacities lower fuel costs things like social customs taboos and government policies may encourage or discourage the growth or, or something the growth of something or encourage the raising of some animals and that they use agriculture products for more than food which drives up demand for example you'll know, we'll learn that corn is in everything from diapers to ketchup um, and so let's take a look at where this model is most relevant today because we know that we're on a much more global um, scale today like I said we may be getting cheese from Wisconsin um, or New York and um, clementines from Spain so farming is much more on a national scale in the United States and Europe so let's take a look at Europe if we play the von apply the von Thunen model here in um, northern europe um, we would have our market gardening our fruit farming and our dairying we have a lot of here in um, like netherlands and in um, belgium in northern france uh, you see a lot of market gardening like a lot of flowers like in holland you see a lot of tulips and flowers that's a big part of what's being grown here you also see a lot of dairying here and then also down here in switzerland there's a lot of dairying going on here as well next we have our timber um, so this is where you have high forest areas and then this is grain farming extensive grain farming here in um, what would be this southern part of France through the northern part of Italy. This is like their bread basket through here. This green farming is called the bread basket because that's where they grow wheat and such, which they used to make bread. And then finally, on the outermost ring, we have our livestock ranching um, and grazing. This is in northern Spain. You see a lot of, of livestock coming from here in the central part of Italy and then over here in into um, southern um, europe east europe in the u.s uh, this is really how agriculture appears in the united states um, here on the coasts we have market gardening and fruit farming on the coast so you see here florida we have so much market gardening and fruit farming in florida market gardening everything from vegetables like tomatoes corn um but more we don't really it's more tomatoes um celery peppers a lot of citrus like um, oranges a lot of sugar cane here 
but also we have a lot of landscape nurseries here so we grow a lot of landscape plants like palm trees and such in nurseries all the way up the coast through um, Georgia South Carolina have a lot of peaches through North Carolina up through Delaware um, into uh, Maine in Maine they have everything from um, they grow cranberries through here they'll have even blueberries all through this region over here in California up through Washington and Oregon a lot of apples in Washington Oregon California they grow everything from citrus to strawberries to almonds and tree nuts all down through here next is two two this is a where a lot of our um, dairying goes on in Vermont that's why you have a lot of Vermont cheddar a lot of cheese through New York Pennsylvania um, a lot of dairying. You also see a lot of dairying over here in Wisconsin. And the thing is, is that they serve the major markets. So you see a lot of huge dairy farms here on the Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, and they're serving this whole Northeast corridor. Wisconsin, they serve this entire Midwest, especially Chicago, uh, major population centers here. You also see in Northern California, a lot of dairying. Third is livestock fattening. So this is where you have a lot of mixed crop livestock all through corn, wheat, soybean, but also a lot of livestock fattening through here because they feed them, force feed them that corn. Um, and you see a lot of pigs, turkeys, chicken barns all down through Arkansas, um, over Missis northern part of Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, over on the western part of North Carolina. North Carolina, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, a lot of livestock patent through here. Next, we have our grain farming. So, largest grain farms in the United States are a lot of, are in Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, um, into the Dakotas. A lot of the of, of um, grain farming through here, and this is uh, the Great Plains. Um, this is also where we call what we call our bread basket. This is America's bread baskets because again, these are the people who feed us. Really, four, three and four, five. This is where a lot of vast majority of our food comes. So whenever you think to yourself, who cares about Nebraska? Well, you do whenever you it's time for you to go and get your bread and get the steaks you like and all the food. Go to Chick Fil A and get your um, chicken fillet sandwich. This is all coming through the, from these areas. Um, mainly three for that chicken. Four if you're looking at bread. Five if you're looking at a lot of our livestock ranching. So a lot of our ranches are still in northern Texas through into New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming. This is still on, out here on the range. Real dry land through here. So again, they still do a lot of um, livestock ranching through here. And finally, here is six. Not a lot of agriculture going on in here in six. Idaho, Montana, there is some. Idaho potatoes. Montana, they have some. But there's a lot of um, desert land through here. Nevada, um, New Mexico, into Utah. A lot of plateau desert um, area. A lot of elevation um, change mountains and such where you just can't do a lot of agriculture through here. So again... This is what it looks like on a more national scale, and that's because of improvements in refrigeration, improvements in transportation. A lot of this agriculture product is moved by rail. If we look at when we look at uh, maps of the rail systems, you'll see that a lot of agriculture product, because the rail goes all through this middle part of America, and then to our major waterways like the Mississippi River um, that comes down through here. And that we transport a lot of that that um, a lot of that agriculture product on rail or on barge through the major river systems um, and right to their their processors. All right, guys, this concludes our presentation about von Tunen's, um land use model.